I'm David Hall. We got a good thing for you right now here on Lightning 100. Got another studio visit from one of our artists playing tomorrow night at Live on the Green, our free downtown uh, music series that continues next week in uh, front of the Metro Courthouse down on Public Square. Dave Barnes was in here yesterday. He's one of the guys playing. Thad Cockrell, who visits with us tomorrow, is also playing. And my old pal here, Matthew Perryman-Jones. Welcome back, Matthew. Thank you so much. Good to be here. Good to have you back. Thanks. Matthew, of course, uh, put out his record, Swallow the Sea, a few months back. And you've heard Save You from that here on Lightning 100. And we're going to talk about that and other things. But uh, Matthew b brought his guitar. So let's hear a song. Let's get ready for tomorrow night. What do you All say? All right. Yeah, this is, a, this is a brand new song. Actually, I've never really played this out in front of anybody, so I figured I'd do something risky today. Here we go. This is a song called Until the Last Falling Star. There was a chance that we could be lovers. I'd write you a book of handwritten letters and burn them all up to the end just to start over again if there was a chance that we could be lovers i'd learn how to dance how to hold without touching oh love where have you been I'll wait for your lead to come in So tell me the secret Is there a way into your heart? Cause I want to believe it Or will I be wishing until the last falling star If there was a chance That we could be lovers I'd swim seven oceans And keep going further I'd hold my breath until you slipped Those words that belong on your lips So tell me the secret Is there a way into your heart? Cause I want to believe it Or will I be wishing until the last falling star say a lie it could be anything just stay with me Ah, that's great. Matthew Perriman Jones live here on Lightning 100 in the studio with us performing a brand new song, Until the Last Falling Star. And Matthew is performing tomorrow night for free at Live on the Green along with Dave Barnes and Thad Cockrell. This show tomorrow night really is a, a, a definite showcase of Nashville talent. All three guys uh, on the bill calling Nashville home these days. Matthew, how long have you been kicking around in Nashville? I've been here uh, in in January, it'll be 11 years in Nashville. Yeah. Wow. You came up from Atlanta, right? That's right, yeah. 
What was it like, uh, uh, do, you know, down there in Atlanta, the music scene uh, compared to what you found when you got up here? Well, you know, when I left uh, in Atlanta, it was the late 90s, and, um, you know, in the mid-90s, there's uh, it, it kind of when I was more a part of the songwriter scene there, and it, there was a really thriving songwriter scene in Atlanta at that time. Uh, Eddie's Attic was sort of the hub of that, and there were just a lot of great writers in, in Atlanta. Um, I don't know. I think right now my sense is it's dwindled a bit. Um, maybe they've all moved to Nashville at this point. Uh, <clears throat> but when I moved here, I was I kind of wasn't sure what to expect. And I had a lot of folks that, you know, kept telling me I need to move to Nashville. There's just a lot of stuff. And I always thought, you know, kind of cowboy music and all that. But I was really surprised to find this sort of underground, at the time, underground uh, group of songwriters and artists and bands that I just just loved and uh and just so i stuck around you know i've been here almost 11 years so yeah it doesn't seem like it took you long to fall in with a bunch of like-minded people like uh the folks that uh, are in uh, 10 out of 10 these days yeah. uh, how long before you felt uh like you had some friends here rather than just the uh the lonely guy that came up from atlanta and didn't right. know anybody how long did it take well, to, I... to meet some folks sure yeah i mean nashville is definitely a friendly town so it didn't seem hard um uh, so, you know, within a few years, I, I met some really great people. And, and of course, that just kind of keeps adding. You know, there's just such so many great people here. Um, and uh, so I think I think sort of almost the, the, the transient nature of this town, everybody's here from somewhere else, I think kind of creates this sort of welcoming environment here, which so that's kind of how I found it. So it wasn't hard to, to meet people, for sure. Let's talk about Nielsen Hubbard, who you've worked closely with on a couple yeah. of records uh, now. How did you guys first hook up? Um, you know, I think uh, that was through some mutual friends. I had a, a buddy of mine, Andy Hubbard, who will be playing with me tomorrow night. He plays drums, uh, w does a lot of projects with Nielsen, and I think he was maybe working on Garrison Starr's record or something. And um, anyway, he, he gave Nielsen a demo of some songs I was working on, and Nielsen and I didn't know each other prior to that. And... Um, and just said, hey, this this guy's looking to, to do a new record. You know, maybe you guys want to meet. So we we met, and, and I I knew some of Nielsen's work through you know Garrison stuff and Kate York, um, and really really enjoyed his stuff. So um, and what he brought to the to the table. So um, we hooked up, and um, and we've done two records so far. So yeah, and I was poking around on your website today, and it, it was funny to me. I was talking about uh, Swallow the Sea being your third album, but your first proper release. Did you release a couple of records improperly? I mean, <laughs> did the uh, album uh, release police come and bust right. you or something? I think uh, that's my manager's uh, <laughs> language that she's using. Uh, <laughs> I, I wasn't really sure what that meant, the first proper release. I think what it meant was that, that we had a little more of a of a, of a team around it and, and we were releasing it, you know, um, I guess... I don't know properly through, through the, <laughs> yeah. the right mediums and such, but uh, but yeah, I've got a couple records that I've done prior to. I yeah, the one before that. this was called uh, "Throwing Punches in the Dark," which mm -hmm. was a good record. Nothing Thank improper you. about that one at Thank all. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs>